This college basketball picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted parlays to same game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet $100, and get a $100 free bet at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash winbet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash winbet. This is Jim Mora, and you're listening to SGPN. Let her ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dong. Officially a basketball school, bitches. Ha! Bring on Colby so we can talk some shit. Joining us on the line remotely, uh, Colby Dant, aka the Dantabase, aka Pick Dundee. What's happening, Colby? Just sipping some of that beautiful Dothekis. <laughs> Just sipping that beautiful whiskey <laughs> you guys gave me for Christmas. Don't fake the lisp. Yeah. Don't do that to us. <laughs> the lisp is because uh, the lisp will find its way back. Uh, I'll never forget when Ryan, yeah. like dead serious, was like, ha- he he thought he was like his brain was unraveling because he goes, "Has Colby had the lisp the entire time and we just never noticed?" <laughs> <I'm> like, no, <laughs> this is definitely. <laughs> I think we would have come up at some point what do you uh, in the show. <laughs> All right, we guys, are here. Guys, can, 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 can we give a special shout out to the DoubleTree Hotel in Albuquerque, New Mexico? You never know what you're going to find at the DoubleTree <laughs> Hotel in Albuquerque. Perhaps you'll find the good old basketball team of New Mexico State, and perhaps you might find a murder weapon, a, aka a gun that was used in a, uh, a little murder. You know. What what you guys? Do you guys catch this story? Yeah, uh, no, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're strangely suited to have this conversation. Uh, the exclusive uh, watch party of any SGPN corporate trip is forensic files. So, a lot of a lot of obvious boxes not checked here. Uh, yeah. but <laughs> but well, so it sounds like the New Mexico State players and coaches involved in this skip town in a university owned bus. <laughs> Which is like you can't make this hey, shit up. Hey, where are we gonna find these New Mexico uh, <laughs> state basketball players? Oh, I don't know. There is a New Mexico state bus parked at this hotel, and the coach was keeping the murder weapon on him. <laughs> this is insane. That's now, rule number one. Uh, and and apparently, who knows the whole case? But he, well, it, it sounded like there was Sean this, with the transfer portal nowadays. You got to have some leverage over these kids. You know what I mean? Well, and, and what a great maybe this is the ultimate recruiting tool where you go, hey, listen, if you kill someone. We are. We have your back. We are going to be there with you to the end. We're going to dispose evidence. We're going to risk getting prosecuted for seven to fifteen years for hiding evidence. That's how much we care about uh, you coming to New Mexico State basketball. You nailed it. Our our coaches double as gun guys, drug guys, whatever <laughs> you need us to be. We'll hold it. Well, and and you know now that you can pay players legally, what do these bad guys hold now that they don't have to hold duffel bags of cash? I guess it is well, potentially murder weapon. Also makes sense uh, why the. The SEC is partnered so closely with the fine universities of New Mexico. <laughs> go, go. Well, I mean, I mean, I feel like guys, we gotta lock up New Mexico State the rest of the year. You look, <laughs> you look at what Pitt's been doing. Remember, Pitt's point guard punched the cop in a, in the face, mm. right? To start the season, they've been playing pretty good basketball. I mean, you know, my theory, my theory: the more the more arrests around a team, the more uh, suspicious play. Uh, you know, then we gotta you gotta go heavy on them. New Mexico State definitely gonna make the NCAA tournament now. <laughs> I, I mean, he's on this. Uh, there is something, well, e- and, even though it does seem nefarious and evil, to suggest that criminals might be better at athletics. I mean, what's the original athletic, Sean? Gladiators. Yes. 
And what happened there? Well, if you think about your committee, one man left. You're committing a murder. You're running from the scene. Yeah. You're jumping to avoid cops. You're using your wingspan to dispose of evidence. There's a lot of <laughs> traits that you know. Maybe we need a criminal combine. We got and Ken, obviously Ken athletes. Palm needs a new if, we, if we had a criminal combine, and you know, college athletes, pro athletes would do no. the best. I just want a Ken Palm metric. Well, and this really Days served. This really is a. Uh, this is kind of burying the lead because New Mexico, one of my locks. I went one and two on locks. Colby gave him out as a dog. dog. New Mexico on the money line plus nine and a half. Uh, last podcast we played, they won outright against St. Mary's. They are just been uh, on a roll. So it's it's weird. This story is almost taken away from New Mexico's uh, really awesome start to the season. Well, and and we we gave away on this very show the New Mexico parlay. The yes. you know the the, the green chili Mexico parlay. In New Mexico State. Yeah, exactly. Boom, that hit for us, even if there was a murder weapon involved. <laughs> well, I mean, unrelated to the murder weapon. That's a spicy we, green chili we parlay. Hit a, we, we hit a sweet, sweet ass uh, fucking parlay. Uh, yeah, I mean, nice job, guys. Let's get to it. Let's talk college basketball. Of course, if you're looking to bet on college hoops, bet big, win bigger with win bet. Just head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. Bet $100, get a $100 free bet. So many ways to win. You can fire up that parlay wheel. Who doesn't love a good parlay wheel? I mean, just imagine that thing spinning around. What it will it land on? Well, we get some nice boosted odds, maybe a free entry to win an awesome prize. So many opportunities to win. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through window is available. If you are someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Ding, 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 ding. All right, let's get to it. We have lines for the college basketball games tomorrow. Some real, some projected, but mostly, uh, All mostly real. pretty legit. Okay. All real. All real. One hundred. We we waited just long enough for. It does seem like uh, sometime between one thirty and two thirty Pacific time, uh, most most uh, lines are are getting open there, which we appreciate uh, the good folks that do that for us. Sean, one thing to note from last week: uh, nothing with my record. I've been pretty dreadful lately. Probably worth worth noting me for for a fade job, but. The Discord picks that we refer to every week. I finally went back and tabulated. If you took, if you faded us when we all three agree, and I know this is going to psychologically change us now. That's why I'm saying it. If you faded us every time we agreed, 2016 and two against the spread. But more importantly, you've only had one losing week, and so uh, we got to do better. This is Bro, a, I mean, this I don't is a know players what, only I mean, meeting right now. I know Colby is Benedict Dan, but Ryan, are what? you gonna start pulling positive stats for the Dallas Cowboys? Pop. Discord is our enemy. Well, They're going against us. That's why you would if you were fighting the revolution, you don't go, oh, look at the look at these great battles that the uh, England has won. They're the enemy right now. Sean, you ever been in a locker room? See what I just yes. did? I got you riled Bolton up. Bolton board I just, material. I just motivated you in the players only meeting <laughs> as we step to the court. To pick a game starting here on the East Coast, little, little Big East. Uh, th you know this game used to matter, Colby. Now it's kind of like a JV matchup over there in the Big East. 3:30 p.m. on the West Coast, Queens, New York plays host to St. John's and DePaul. St. John's laying eight and a half. Ugh. De uh, what one of the schools has uh, what they call DePaul Day. Which is just like a, a celebration because you beat DePaul every time because they suck. I don't think it's St. John's, but is St. John's going to have a DePaul day? I'm surprised DePaul is catching this many points. I mean, they're they're still. They're, I mean, they're having a pretty good year. Uh, you know, St. John's stole one of their best players, David Jones. Uh, they are without center Nick Ongenda. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but uh, you know, DePaul 52nd and three point. Uh, and what I like is 13th in free throw shooting. So if I'm going to take a team like DePaul getting eight and a half points, they better hit their free throws. This to me is just way too high. Colby, what are you doing? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the angle here, I get it. St. John's eight and one DePaul five and three, but I do think it's a little personal. I saw some of the coaches mm -hmm. remarks about 
Uh, St. John's perhaps poaching one of their, or, you know, St. John's leading scorer is David Jones. I think DePaul might have this one circled. I am a bit concerned about the injury to Njenga, but I think eight and a half is a little too much. Uh, give me, give me the points and the blue demons on the road in Queens. I think they might be a live dog. It will it be lit in Queens? Somewhat, somewhat. I think you know. It's, oh I, wow, I feel that like is not. Did. That is not a good lit rating. I feel like they have a better crowd than the Garden. With St. John's, you know, I feel like they, I didn't get a lot of passion. Really I, I didn't get a lot of passion out of Colby's pick there. You mentioned there being injury concerns to Famunda and uh, St. John's at home. It, Colby's wrong. Place will be a little bit more lit than that. Uh, I'll stand on an island. I'll I'll give you I'll give people a reason uh, to debate this game. I don't want to make it easy and just give them a pick right off the back. Those Discord bastards. Michigan State, Penn State, heading to State College. Colby will tip will tell you. Penn State, pretty solid team this year. Yeah, they're good. Laying three and a half against Tom Izzo uh, and the Spartans. Three thirty on the West Coast for the tip time. I mean, Michigan State's pretty battle tested. Penn State's played some played some good teams too. Lost to my Hokies, who are turning out to be a very good team. Well, what I think surprising about Michigan State, they started out pretty good. Um, you know, didn't win, but had a nice cover on the uh, aircraft carrier. Their their defensive rating is really bad. Like uh, right now, they're two hundred sixty eighth in defensive rating. I I just don't see that continuing as the season goes on. But right now, they're just not not in great shape. And this is going to be a tough spot. Penn state again, great in free throws of uh, 14th in the nation and number one in shooting threes. I, and that's how you beat a, a Michigan state team. You outshoot them. Uh, yeah. I, and Penn state coming off a double OT loss. I think they, I think they roll here. I love Penn state Colby. I agree. I agree. I mean, uh, look, Malik Hall has been out for Michigan State, and they've had problems. I would say since he ever went out. And I do believe those defensive stats are are a bit off because of the schedule Michigan State has played. There hasn't been, a, you know, a, uh, you know Chapman University or something in there to really pad their stats like most of these other schools. But uh, I do think they they've they've kind of hit a, a mid season or early season slump here. And uh, I mean, losing to Northwestern at home. I know Northwestern's pretty decent this year, but I think Penn State coming back from that double overtime loss at Clemson, it's going to have, it's going gonna, to, gonna, A, I think this place will be pretty lit. And I think they're just uh, <laughs> right now healthier, playing better. Pickett and Lundy in the backcourt have been pretty fire. Uh, give me Penn State. Well, I mean, that's, you start checking the, the March Madness boxes, right? Like, according to Ken Palm, Penn State's actually the most experienced team. And you talk about the experience in the backcourt, everything you want in a big time matchup. And we're probably getting a discount uh, just because of the name brand of, of Michigan state here. So you're, you're probably laying less than you had to, uh, if this was any other sort of similar profile team. All right. We all agree. Discord gets the first go. pick. a little, a little uh, rare meat for the, 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 the demons down in the discord Hofstra Purdue. West Lafayette, Indiana. Wow, Purdue's good, huh, Colby? Uh, once again, always seem to be a good basketball team, and always seem to be forgotten at the very beginning of the season. Four p.m. Uh, is the tip time on the West Coast. Eleven, or I'm sorry, eighteen and a half is the number. I mean, this is just an insanely large number for for Purdue to be laying. This is a crazy uh, stat differential too. And shout out to Ken Palm. You can see the splits. Uh, pretty fun on on some of their metrics there, but Purdue 11th in the nation of rebounds. Hofstra 341st in rebounding. I mean, when you have a seven foot four big man Zach Eady, it it's uh, it's almost insane. He's only averaging 12.8 rebounds a game. Like, who is boxing this guy out, especially on Hofstra? Very soft though. I mark that down for for come March oh, Madness. Yeah. Very I mean, soft. Uh, he's got Charmin Drew, soft. Drew Timmy vibes. All of a sudden, you know, hey, for number three pick overall. Uh, next thing you know, the kid's out for the season. I think, I think I kind of might take Hofstra here because you're catching an, a, a crazy eighteen and a half. Hofstra plays small ball and they can shoot it. So I, I maybe they get this cover late. I, I don't know. Eighteen and a half is crazy, but I'll lean Hofstra. Call me. I mean, this place will be lit, but I, I actually am very intrigued. Hofstra normally starts four guards. Yeah. So you have Purdue who's super big 
and Hofstra, who's super quick, and they're going to, you know, I think try to take advantage of the of uh, the fact that Purdue's so big. I'm going to take a shot on on the Pride covering as well. Uh, they got to stay hot though, because the momentum in this game, I, I, this crowd does is pretty bonkers. So I will say, if they if they go down early, it could get ugly. But uh, give me Hofstra in the points. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the points as well. I think uh, worth noting they do have they, they have Nebraska on deck, Purdue, uh, and there's there and then Davidson, and then they play a couple absolute just walk games through the holidays with New Orleans and Florida A and M. Then their schedule, the Big Ten schedule, uh, really starts. But with a proper game on deck with Nebraska, another reason why maybe the points are the smart side here. Another pick. I, we're we're all on on Hofstra. Yeah, let's oh, go. Oh Jesus, it's happening. Uh, we're I mean we're we're gonna put it to the test. I like it. Motivation served. Looking through the big glass. Florida Gulf Coast. Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic laying eight and a half here at home in Boca Raton. Seven p.m. tip out there on the East Coast. It's gonna be super duper lit uh, down in the retirement homes of Boca Raton. Why are we picking this game? You're picking this game because because Florida Gulf Coast seven and two they won at USC this year. Florida Atlantic seven and one, and they that, I think they lost what their opening night or the night after. Uh, but they they won at Florida. These are two teams we could be seeing in March. And uh, how about FAU? I mean, this is a team that is not traditionally a basketball power. We know Florida Gulf Coast has had success. Remember their Sweet Sixteen run with Dunk City, but the Owls. 52nd in defense in the country right now, 54th in offense. They're very efficient at uh, shooting the three, uh, 24th in the nation at shooting just about oh, just a shade under 40% from three, uh, 30, you know, 35th in the nation and in, in field goal percentage in general. Uh, they, 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 they have a, a fast pace, so they love to push it. This is a, this is a really good matchup here, but it's also Florida Gulf Coast has kind of been the mid major of Florida, so I do think they're sitting there saying we're getting disrespected. Eight and a half points. Uh, I'm going to take the Owls. I think the Owls they're going to slow it up. They're going to slow down that that this game, and uh, I think that they'll be able to at least cover it. I th- I wouldn't be surprised if they won it on the money line either because Atlantic's been playing really good lately. But I've, I'm just waiting for that tide to to turn. Wait, it's might a, it, happen here. It's Florida Gulf Coast to Owls. Yeah. Okay. No, no. The Eagles, Florida, the Eagles, Florida Gulf Coast, the Florida Atlantic Owls. Okay. Cause yeah, I'm all over Florida Gulf Coast. I, I think I think the fact that they're getting eight and a half to me is is crazy. I mean, a lot of the stuff you mentioned, Florida Gulf Coast also does pretty well. Twenty fifth in the nation in free throw shooting, twenty seventh in three pointers per game. Um, not amazing in an offensive rebounding, but they're able to put up points. I know FAU probably is the better defense. They do have the home court, but I I think this is going to be a good game. So, uh, give me the team catching eight and a half. Hmm. Go ahead, Colby. I was going to say, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I I do think Florida Gulf Coast has the the better coach. I also think that uh, Isaiah Thompson and Zach Anderson, you know, they're, they're that's their two leading scores. One's a guard, one's a forward. And I think they they can pose some threats to to FAU. FAU has been really good this year, though. I was shocked they went to uh, the swamp and and won against Florida. And I'm keep waiting for them to to come back down. But uh, I think Gulf Coast is going to just just show them, hey, we're the real we're the real mid major here in Florida. Hmm. I like Wait, it. you said Gulf Coast is going to show them that they're the real mid major? Uh, who are you picking? I, I'm confused. The Eagles are Florida Gulf Coast. I'm yeah, taking I was, Florida Gulf Coast. Pat Chambers, okay. the head coach, former Penn State coach. Yeah, but you said it, multiple times you're taking the Owls. You said you did say you like the Owls. Uh, for the season, they've been playing really good. Is my no, point. The Owls no, have been playing good. Got yeah. it. Right. I mean, did I miss that, Kramer? I I would like to to <laughs> say uh, yes, but I I might have missed the same thing then. Um, I, I once again uh, the Discord unfortunately getting some real meat here because I agree with you. I think I think there's a little a little concern of uh, strength on strength in terms of what Florida Atlantic needs to do to stretch the lead out. So let's let's fade them. Take the eight and a half. Cornell heads to Miami, Florida. What, have they fired the the football coach yet in Miami? Um, at, me just absolute dumpster fire. 
now they're 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 a basketball school now uh, laying fifteen and a half against the Ivy One League. One step ahead now. of Virginia Tech, Ryan. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they did they did leave the Big East and join the ACC together, so uh, perhaps they are skipping down the proverbial road. 7 p.m. local time, tip, not gonna be lit. Definitely no litness uh, here. It's it's I don't. This is a why are we picking this game? Well, why is why are we picking this game? But why is Cornell getting 15 and a half points? I mean, they're I I, I know they haven't played. I mean, have they played anyone great? But still, like they're seven and one. Um, they're shooting the ball well. They're getting a bunch of steals. Uh, they're they're moving the ball well. Like, what am I missing? I, I'm with you. I mean, look, uh, seven and one is seven and one. Uh, yeah. they, they've been shooting the three well. You know, really good at passing, running their offense. Third in the nation in assists. Um, and and Miami tends to fall asleep a lot of times when they're these big, these big favorites. You know, I know Jimmy Larry is great. They went to the elite eight a season ago, but I think, I just think they kind of fall asleep on these. So I normally like to take the big number when they're playing whoever against Miami, but especially when you're playing a team that's seven and one that might actually really be believing Cornell wasn't picked to be great in the Ivy, but Hey, you start winning, you start buying into what the coach is, uh, you know, preaching. I, I give me the points in the big red. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think. W- do we really know what what Miami is as a team yet? I mean, they've they they won. I guess you give them credit for the UCF road win. Um, yeah, it's a big number. I'm with you. I I don't I don't quite get it, and I also don't. I mean, I have I have watched. I think it was the did they play did did Miami play Rutgers already? Yeah, yes. they played in the the yeah they played in the Miami beat Rutgers in Miami. Watch, believe, watch the tremendous amount of that game. My, Miami play will go long stretches of just, it's kind of like North Carolina right now too. They just go long stretches of playing horrible basketball, just horrible, horrible like NBA basketball, and it just Cornell will eat that up. Fit plus fifteen and a half. Next, uh, another Ivy League. Are you serious? What's going? We got a Col- Colby on the road picking games. All right, so is this a seven p.m.? Is this a late night game, or is this no, meant to, th- this is meant to read four, four people? Okay, so yeah. uh, seven p.m. on the East Coast, Villanova hosts Penn. I guess this is a rivalry game of sorts. Villanova laying thirteen and a half, back to back Ivy League schools on the podcast for the first time ever. I'm going. Uh, I'm going. Uh, I, I know Villanova's off to a rough start, only three and five, but this is an ultimate get-right <laughs> game against a struggling well, Penn team. It better be who who is is shitty in the Ivy League. I mean, come on, they were preseason favorites. They haven't done shit. They're five and six, even in the Ivy League. Villanova still hits their free throws, um, and you know, still really good at taking care of the basketball. They still have Caleb Daniels, so. Yes, the coach is off to a rough start, but Villanova minus 13 and a half. I think they've gotten a little bit of their confidence back, and this is just an awesome time to get a good ass kicking in against Penn. I'm w- I'm with you. I, I think we just saw that against uh, they needed that win so bad against uh, Oklahoma. And let's not forget that they're their number one recruit coming into this season who's been out every game except the Oklahoma game, Cam Whitmore. He is back, and he, I think he's going to be a big ingredient of of being able to, you know, turn this thing around. They're still waiting for Justin Moore, but I think I think Nova's going to going to put it on Penn here. They need this win. I'm going to fade him. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I, this this uh, this new podcast format where Colby and Sean agree on everything is getting really disgusting. And no, I'm just a I'm just a fellow sharp like Colby. I mean, I, I'm out there shopping the tally site lines as soon as they drop. I get you the best numbers. I put you on the right side of the games, and so does Colby. That's why we're dominating. And while you could argue that Villanova has played a decent schedule, they've not produced outcomes uh, uh, that are at all positive. So uh, this is a big number. I think maybe they get the win. Maybe you guys are right about that, but. Do they cover? Absolutely not. That's all that matters. So again, uh, I'm on pen. Good luck, guys. Ryan, you know what's awesome? Trade coffee, getting it delivered to your house. Hmm. 
Every day I start my day off with a delicious cup of uh, delicious trade coffee. It, it, it's just great. And it's so nice not having to. Have you ever woken up in the morning and you're like, oh man, where's the coffee? Uh, that is a horrible feeling. That's why Trade Coffee gets it delivered right to your house. Subscription service that makes it so simple uh, to get the new coffees. And you can even see the coffees that Kramer and I like when you go to drinktrade.com slash SGP and you go, how do you know what coffees you like? How do you know what flavors? Great question. All you do is you start off by taking their coffee quiz. They personally match your specific taste buds to a uh, unique roast of coffee. I'm a big whole bean guy. It is an exciting day when the trade coffee comes in the mail. You can smell it coming through the mailbox. That's how good and fresh and delicious these coffee beans are. Right now, uh, you can get $30 off your subscription. All you gotta do is go to drinktrade.com slash SGP. Head over to drinktrade.com slash SGP for $30 off. Look at that, and, and put it in the SGP coffee mug uh, would love to see some screenshots. People drinking the trade coffee in the SGP coffee mug winning combo there. Drinktrade.com slash S G P. We're also brought to you by Dave. Holidays are right around. Uh, everyone's a little, uh, you know, cr a little tight for cash. Maybe you got to get one of your employees a bottle of whiskey. I'm just sipping that beautiful whiskey you guys gave me for Christmas. <laughs> and, and you realize you're a couple bucks short. Oh, uh, you don't have to borrow money or you know, put it on some layaway program. You just need a couple bucks to help get you through the holidays. And your buddy Dave here is uh, ready to help. Dave is the banking app that can get you up to $500 instantly with extra cash with Dave. There's no interest, no late fees or credit checks. Again, it's money to get those last minute gifts, catch up on some bills so you can buy the gifts, whatever it is. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. Download the Dave app from the app store right now. Go to dave.com slash S G P N that's D A V E.com slash S G P N sign for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly for terms and conditions. Go to dave.com slash legal instant transfer fees, apply banking services provided by evolve bank and trust member FDIC. Oh, interesting. No credit check. So get, go hit up Dave and then buy some trade coffee with the money. There you go. It's uh yeah. Create a flywheel or whatever they call it. Dayton heads to Blacksburg to take on my Hokies. We're coming off a big win. Pretty much dominated university of North Carolina. Some call them a blue blood. Some call them a basketball school. Some say they have infinite money the backing of Michael Jordan. Uh, the basketball Illuminati, but they suck at basketball this year. I mean, I know I'm a Hokies fan. I know the Hokies are, are pretty good this year. I know they're they're a, a senior laden team, so it makes sense they're good early. But God damn, did they fuck up North Carolina? It was I, it's the most enjoyable thing I've done uh, Virginia Tech wise in a long time. Now the Hokies take on Dayton could be a letdown spot here. Hokies laying seven. Oh, this is a massive let, letdown spot. I mean, I haven't seen any time I see Ryan excited about Virginia Tech athletics. You know, I can't have anything nice. You know, something <laughs> bad has happened. I mean, the 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 coach Pry. Oh, remember Coach it. Pry, Colby. Remember how he's going to change the program, oh. bringing grit. He's unload. He's no, unloading no. refrigerators. All Pry. <laughs> All Pry. He's you know lifting bags of sand. He's walking up you know the hill and snow both ways. Yeah. Becoming he's like Chuck Norris of college football oh. coaches. Meanwhile, he completely shits the bed. The the program's humiliated, and I'm worried something could be happening similar on a much smaller scale in Virginia Tech basketball. They start out hot because they are a senior laden team, and then they cool off just oh, in time no, for no. the tournament. I'm taking Dayton uh, plus seven points here. I know because he, I know Virginia Tech's off to a good start, but this is they they just beat UNC. Like if they had a pair of scissors, they'd be cutting the net down. Like this is this is the time you fade the Hokies. So first of all, to point out uh, your your macro take sucks. They they have some young guys and some guys who are relatively new to the team. That they're still working in, so I think I, I think we have not seen the athletic ceiling of this team. Uh, that being said, and I, I'm I'm curious to hear Colby's opinion, but I, I think we're gonna find ourselves profiling this Hokies team as a as a tough team to lay a lot of points with. They're scrappy. They're gonna play to the level of their competition. I think typically, 
and I I don't know. Short of them just getting flat out hot because they can play defense. Short of them just getting completely hot uh, from behind the three point line, I don't think this team covers the big number. And uh, as a metaphorical statement, I will be taking Dayton, a team that I love to bet on against my Hokies with the points. Hokies win, but don't cover. Uh, I'm with wow, you. I really? think Anthony. Uh, I think Dayton's going to cover this. You look, Malachi Smith is out for the Flyers, but and the, Tyrone Baker, we know out for the season as well. But Dayton's really talented, and and if you look, okay, they're five and four. It's been disappointing this year, and they've struggled so on offense. But uh, close, a one point loss to Wisconsin in a rock fight where they only gave up forty three points. Uh, a four point loss in Provo uh, against BYU. Uh, I think this team will fight is going to fight for Grant. I think their defense can present some problems for the Hokies and uh, Deron Holmes. I think could you know Dayton beat him last year. That's the only thing I'm concerned about is the revenge spot. But I, I'm going to take the Flyers to at least cover this. Uh, maybe the Hokies get the win. It, it is a letdown spot. I mean, how many times can you say they beat North Carolina? It's not. It's not often <laughs> that they they beat Carolina every year. So they, they I think, also uh, they're also shipping out to Brooklyn for whatever classic is happening uh, where they'll be playing Oklahoma state uh, this Sunday. So again, not that they're not that they're looking at, it's just kind of a dip in the schedule, you know, like Dayton, good program, but like I said, they're going to win. Uh, they have a home crowd now cause they are a basketball school, but they're just not going to cover the number. They're not, they're not like a super great three point shooting team this year. A little bit it different will be than lit. last year. Yeah. <laughs> They run good off. Hey, Colby had to get in one last point. Uh, I mean, it would. Uh, thank you, Colby, for noticing. But college, and and for those who have never been, I'm sure most people have never been to Castle Coliseum. It's a tiny fucking build. It's a tiny place. Back when I was in school, uh, the the girls program was better than the the men's program, which it's I guess it still is technically by ranking. And the, the men, you could go to a men's game and sit like front row anytime you wanted. No one was at the game, so cool to see it filled up. It, it must be loud. I remember being there for some key moments and it, it got loud just cause it had that kind of high school gymnasium. So to Colby's point lit will be had Wednesday night. All right, moving along, Nebraska, Indiana, Bloomington plays host to the uh, Hoosiers laying 12, 5 30 PM tip out here on the West coast. The Hoosiers laying 12. That's a big number. That's the theme of this show. Big numbers. Also worth noting, I mean, we've we've given the Discord a lot of picks already. I mean, if if we're gonna play the letdown angle, is there a better one than this? Fred Hoiberg perhaps getting the biggest win of his time in Lincoln. Uh, he's came, coming into the season on the hot seat. They've won three in a row, but they just beat Creighton at Creighton as a double digit dog. Creighton was a top ten team. Uh, oh. Now they got to head to Bloomington. This place will be lit, but Indiana coming off their first loss of the season at the rack against Rutgers. Uh, man, I mean, I, I, I like, kinda, I like I, I'm with you, Colby. I like Indiana here. Normally I don't mind a letdown spot as much if they're, if they're a dog catching points like Nebraska is, but they're a dog catching points going on the road to your point against the Indiana team that just lost uh, against Rutgers. They're going to be fired up They're at home. Um, much better team, both offensively and defensively. I mean, Nebraska is interesting, especially uh, Big Ten kind of up for grabs here. So I, 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 I do think Nebraska is an interesting team overall this season. This is just a horrible spot for them. So I'm going to take Indiana lay in the big number. Yeah, I mean, I think they would cover this if this was played next week. I just think the situation is right for Indiana. It's wrong for Nebraska. Uh, I man, that number's tough, but I, I think at the end of the day, give me Indiana minus the points. Trace Jackson Davis, they're, they're top 25 on offense and defense. Mike Woodson proving that an NBA hire, uh, you know, sometimes does work out in college basketball. Uh, give me uh, g- g- give me the Hoosiers to to handle biz. Yeah, but he's like the Tyreek Hill of college basketball. You can't you can't define a new thing based on an outlier. Like the NBA coaches haven't worked all that well, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, uh, the here's the here's the case against the the double letdown spot we just talked about uh, with no, fa- Creighton in North Carolina. What what if those teams just aren't that good and they're a little overrated, Colby, in those preseason rankings that you love so much? 
So just just throwing it out there because North Carolina was number one before they played a fucking game. Creighton was a, a, a high seed, but we haven't exactly seen them perform well on the court of late. Uh, you know, just worth noting. Could be maybe something uh, of momentum, and I'll and I'll I'll uh, unlike the Dayton game, I'm going to play the momentum one here. I think Nebraska getting way too many points here. Indiana, another team that just uh, Woodson's done a good job, but the team just they forget they forget basketball for periods of time. I've caught I got got, got a chance to cop watch co- watch a couple of their games, and they just they play NBA. It, not NBA basketball. It's not as bad as the uh, who, who were we talking about earlier, but. Uh, Michigan State, but they definitely or Miami. I'm sorry, but they seem to to forget how to play team ball for a little bit. So I'll catch the points, and I'm uh, just I'm really being conscientious of all these picks we're giving to the Discord. Uh, Fallon Iverson chiming in saying, "Kramer, stop hating on my boy Colby's takes." What do you mean? Well, I mean, uh, th- the show has turned into Sean Let's and Colby. Sean and Colby have the same takes, <laughs> and then uh, Ryan might have a different take. Uh, moving along to our Lord and Savior. Colby's copying my takes. What can I say? Our Lord and Savior, and uh, just all around great guy coming from LMU, Kelly LePepe, catching four points. You're gonna make this man an underdog. <laughs> I know they've lost some games this year. They're taking on Grand Canyon in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, 6 p.m. tip on the West Coast. Four. I guess that is the spread. Is La Pepe like Samson, where like if he cut his hair, he would lose all his strength and not be able to get offensive rebounds and not be able to put? Because I, I, we're, I, he does. This is interesting. He's going in to play Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, a, a very religious school where La Pepe almost feels like a biblical figure. Like he's someone they would talk about in he, the Bible. Water is moving side to side to allow this man to walk. Yes, he. It, it, the Red Sea is parting the way, so he can just come down the lane. And and dominate <laughs> in the that- same way that Moses parted the Red Seas. La Pepe is going to uh, part the defense that Grand Canyon trots out, much like a Grand Canyon, and just dominate. I uh, mean, you, you got to take uh, Grand Canyon is shooting the ball really well, and that's and they don't turn it over a lot. But come on, we're a La Pepe podcast. Give me uh, give me LMU plus four all day. Red Sea is the stripper name of his favorite stripper. <laughs> Parting those seas. Parting Red Sea. <laughs> I mean, He's La one Pepe of those guys is a legend. Will get penetration. <laughs> La Pepe is a legend, but you got to know when to fade him. Grand Canyon, this place gets lit. I think uh, GC is going to is going to Bryce Drew. Their their teams are always well coached, uh, and I think Loyola's defensive woes aren't going to aren't going to travel well in, into the Grand Canyon here. Give me uh, GC minus the four. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, Ooh, I, I, I'm on a La Pepe Island. Thank you. I I think there is something to his power. Call me. I'm on like La Pepe's arc. Bring me two <laughs> of every defense because uh, La Pepe is about to repopulate the world. I the, yeah, the analogy I, doesn't work exactly, but you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm uh, I'm on the arc alone. Love it. Yeah. Good luck. I mean, I, I sometimes uh, you know our heroes have to fall. For us to fo- really uh, follow them, I don't understand no, that I don't analogy. I don't but either. all right, I, I can't. I mean, he's he's an awesome person, but I did watch him. Um, how bad they they've gotten their ass kicked. Uh, I'm let me pull up this. Right, strike this. From they the they just beat Nevada. They just beat Nevada at home. Steve Alford and Le Pepe was a problem for the Wolfpack. Now, I think what he's trying to say is, hey, Michael Jordan was once cut in high school. And look how he responded. Oh, I think yeah. Pepe falls in the Grand Canyon. So, he so gets back up. What's so, that? so Le Pepe getting four points against Grand Canyon. This is his Michael Jordan gets cut from high school moment. A hundred percent. All right. So I'm gonna, making sure I'm, I'm tracking this. I'm gonna give you a couple a couple comp games for uh UC Irvine road game. They get their ass beat by 15 points. Colorado State road game, they get their ass beat by 16 points. Grand Canyon road game, they get their ass beat by greater than four points. All right, moving along. Towson taking on Clemson in beautiful South Carolina. Ooh, a 9 p.m. local time start. Wow, that it, it's going to have to be lit out there in Clemson. 9 p.m. on a uh, Wednesday. It's like 30 minutes short of bedtime, Sean. I don't know, I don't know how they're <laughs> going to do it. Uh, Clemson is not a team. Their coach, 
he's this guy that sits in this area for me where like the fucking team's always well coached, but they're not, they're never good. They're never a good team, but they seem to be well coached, but they always find themselves in not being a good team. So I'm always hesitant to lay points with them like this. Colby. I mean, I completely agree. Liberal John Coliseum. I mean, it, it can be all right at times, but come on. I mean, this is a football school. If anything, Brown L is a solid coach, but he might be there just because his friendship with Dabo Sweeney. Uh, Towson's been really good, man. Towson's been, you know, I think there's potential that we could see them in March. I think there's potential. We could see them outright as a bid. Not only, not only if they, if they were to lose to Charleston or to Hofstra and the CAA, they might get a bid without that. I think they're, uh, they got to win games like this. And I think Towson has all the motivation. You look at their team. They, they've been really good this year. They, they beat UMass Frank Martin squad. Uh, they're, they're a great rebounding team. I, I think, Towson knows they need to win this game, taking the seven points. And I think they might be able to win this on the money line. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think, uh, you know, if you just look at some of the, the dummy stats, you might you know, like Clemson has op, like Clemson has a huge advantage at the three point line, for example, on offense, but they haven't exactly uh, been a team that's carrying their offense with three point shots. So I, I, I'm going to, I, I'm with you. Like this is dog potential again, Clemson's coach. He's a good coach, but they just, you're, there's no reason to lay seven points with this Clemson team. Yeah, I think this is a little close because I do, I, I, my red flag goes off like in the back of my head when Colby just falls in love here with the smaller program over a bigger, uh, you That's know, true. a bigger name program. But it, it is uh, tough to make a case. Disagreeing with Colby for Clemson. Uh, you Two know times what? Yes. In a row? I'm going to go Clemson oh. minus seven. You guys can enjoy your Towson plus seven. I'm I'm thinking uh, Clemson shocks the world here and covers the seven. Uh, Tau Towson is a bit like uh, we'll have to find a name for it, but Towson is like the uh, Radford of Maryland. Is that an insult, Colby? <laughs> Will people from Towson find that to be insulting? Pittsburgh heads uh. the <laughs> Pittsburgh heads the Vanderbilt, uh, and Nash in Nashville, Tennessee, gonna have a good time down there. Those Pittsburgh boys. Another late. Late start, 9 p.m. Uh, on the East Coast, minus four for Vanderbilt. I mean, this is a uh, this is a basketball school versus a football school. Colby, easy pick, right? Vanderbilt. No, I mean m maybe because of the line smelling to me. Pitt's been red hot lately. You know, uh, they just went to down to Raleigh, beat the hell out of NC State. They beat Northwestern by 30 at Northwestern. Yeah. Um, but the line doesn't make a lot of sense to me because I, if anything, I thought Pitt should be favored by four. That's a little concerning, but I think I'm going to ride momentum. Jeff Capel's coaching for his job here. Give me Pitt plus four in Nashville. That, that's the fade. Don't we always fade Jeff Cable though? We, well, we do like to, but this I like to fade Jerry Stackhouse too. Third straight road game as well. Vandy two ninety nine in offensive rating, three hundred forty fifth in free throw shooting. And I'm gonna take them laying four points. No, thank you. Give me the pit Panthers I, plus four. And once again, folks, do, do do we go back to the Pitt's point guard punch the cop in the face? They've been pretty good this year. Ever mm. you know, so hey, I, I'm gonna ride Pitt plus four. Ride that money line. I mean, it will be pretty impressive if they can return from a three game true uh, road trip and and be three and zero. Oh. It feels like that's probably why the number stinks, Colby. The, the, this travel um, going, f but there's been a lot of time, right? It's been a week and a half. It's been three games, not not any uh, massive trips in there. So I, I'm with you. Let's go. Another one for the Discord. They can they can chew on Vanderbilt all they want. UConn heads to Florida, where UConn is laying three and a half. Another late 9 p.m. tip on the East Coast, Florida. Come on, this is ridiculous. A warm weather team like Florida going up into the cold of Connecticut. UConn's good now. No, this is in Gainesville, though. No, oh, is it? Did I read it wrong? No, oh, no, I read it right and then just thought it wrong. Oh, then I hate this cold weather team going down <laughs> to the humidity, the swamp. What's the handicap, Colby? This is another one where the line doesn't make a lot of sense to me. UConn's looked awesome this year. Like I would probably put this at like seven. Uh, so 
I'm a bit surprised. I get it. This place can can get lit, but I I just got to take UConn. Tristan Newton, the ECU transfer, has been great for them. They just have a better team, and I think they have someone that can also kind of keep Castleton in check with Sonogo. Uh, give me UConn, even though the line is is telling me that something's not not right here. I'll, I'll go UConn though on the road there. Well, I mean, what what's the they uh, has UConn hasn't played a a true road game yet, so I guess that's that's the reason. Maybe you're getting a discount. But they've beaten Oklahoma State. They've beaten Iowa State. They've beaten Bama. They've beaten Oregon. Uh, oh, no, they I, look really good. This Ken, Ken like, Palm projects a greater than five point victory. So I mean, I think yeah, give me the Huskies. They're gonna roll here. I I understand you why well, you can make a case for Florida as a home dog, a home Gator here, but um. I don't know. Their defense is still pretty bad. 128th in the country and UConn to Colby's point. They're just playing lights out. You can't fade them right now. And I'll, and I'll be honest based on the market and what we're seeing, like just looking out there where the, the numbers are moving, like places have already moved to, for example, on this game, places have already moved to four. So it per- could be that we're just sharp and like, we're just doing the show early. This, this number is going to be five, five and a half when we wake yeah. up in the morning. So yeah, UConn minus three and a half. Pick Dundee says, always take the best number. You're not betting teams, you're betting numbers. Hawaii, UNLV, we're heading to Vegas, 7 p.m. on the West Coast. UNLV minus six and a half. Well, we would, before we talk about oh. this basketball game, we got to talk about the big UNLV news. The the news that Coach O might be uh, <laughs> becoming the head football coach of the UNLV running Rebels. They just, I mean, if there ever was a guy built for coaching college football in Las Vegas. It has to be Eddie O Colby. Unfortunately, man, just while, while we were recording this, I got news that they did not hire. They went with Barry Odom in Arkansas, DC breaking my heart. Wasn't that going to be perfect to have coach O in Vegas? Oh man. Sean, Unfortunately just... that they, 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 they went with Barry Odom. Uh, I mean, you've ruined the show. We should just get Barry O over Ed O. No, thank you. You're not putting this out. Name me, me, name me one Barry O that's been good. And <laughs> for the it's record, a little political this, joke. For this, some this is not a home game. This is uh, where is this being played, Colby? This is being played at like the T-Mobile. Wait, this is a home game. Well, oh, oh, it's you mean in Nevada. The crowd will be lit, right? This is at, uh, I believe it is called the Dollar Loan Center. So it is a UNLV so, home game. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hmm. Interesting. And I think you got to take. I think you got to take UNLV. I mean, they're undefeated. Hawaii's played good ball, believe it or not. But they played a lot of these matchups on the island. This is a. Uh, this is one where I actually think the fans might show out. Uh, Kevin Kruger, the son of Lana, is the coach in in Vegas, and. They've been kind of rolling, and and you look up at at, at the analytics on this matchup. I, I get it. Ho- take Hawaii's with a grain of salt. They've played a, a, f- a few really bad opponents, but UNLV's played some decent opponents. They're fifty first in the nation at pace. Uh, they're they're tenth in the nation at defense. Uh, is Anderson Hunt and Larry Johnson back there in, in Vegas because they're playing great ball? I think UNLV puts it on Hawaii. In Vegas, another thing is the distraction angle. Come on, these Hawaiians, these so, Hawaiian basketball players going to Vegas. I agree they're gonna have that. a good time. It, they're they're is, distracted by the all right, all so, the shiny trinkets and lights. Real quick, the <laughs> men's basketball team plays at the Thomas and Mack Center. That's their yes. home venue. The first this game is being played, like Colby said, at the Dollar uh, Loan Center. So it's not a true home game. I'm just pointing that out. Just like they're playing at the MGM, the follow their next game is at the MGM. But it is in Las Vegas. It, it, it is in Las Vegas, not at their true home. Different rim, Sean. You know that might makes a difference as a shooter. You understand what happens. You change the shoot, shoot. I understand it all. Uh, too well, right? I'm fade Hawaii. Come on. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's give out a lock dog and bonus lock. Of course, brought to you by sportsgamingpodcast.com slash win bet. Bet big, win bigger. Uh, head over there, use that sign up link, get a hundred dollar free bet. Kramer, what do you got? Well, uh, from a lock perspective, I think we go all the way back to the beginning of the show and we say that Michigan State might be getting a little too much love. Uh, Penn State minus three and a half. Ooh, okay. Uh, some some could say that they've been the better team this year. Certainly more ready to play this game right now. Not in March on right now. Second lock, 
way too many points uh, for Miami. Kumi Cornell plus 15 and a half. Can have some fun round robins in here. And for my dog, I think Colby mentioned uh, you might want to sprinkle this one, but give me Towson. Uh, Clemson is very much, uh, I mean, what, this will probably be a what, two and a half, two and a half, three to one, two and a half. We'll just say plus 250. A very live uh, upset potential here. So the maybe the worst lit factor of all the games is Clemson the worst home environment of all the games we discussed tonight. Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's worse. Mm. Yeah, that's that's pretty low. They have like one. They have like twelve hundred kids on their campus. All right. Yes. <laughs> what are you gonna, What are you doing, Sean? Uh, give me DePaul eight and a half as my first lock. Go. For my second lock, give me Indiana minus twelve. Awesome, awesome spot to just destroy Nebraska, and then uh, Dunk City, Florida Gulf Coast on the money line. It is, uh, you know, it's just a rivalry game. It's way too many points. Give me a uh, FGC on the money line. Colby, what do you got? We're gonna lock up UNLV minus six and a half at the Dollar Loan Center. I might need to use that Dollar Loan Center soon. Uh, then, then. Uh, Okay, he went with Towson. I'll go with Pitt. I think both both are going to be live dogs that can hit, that will hit. In fact, let's do the parlay with that. Towson plus uh, or on the money line and Pitt on the money line. Uh, and the bonus lock is going to be Grand Canyon. Leia Pepe. It's been a fun story, but look, this is this is uh, you come back down well, to reality I mean, a little me. bit before you come you, back up. Let's go. Give me GC. You're going minus against Leia Pepe. This is this is hearsay. Uh, this is heresy. Colby's gonna if Colby gets struck by lightning like Drew Brees, we know he, you angered the gods, Colby, by doing this. Oh my goodness, I'm I'm blown away right now. By the way, the Dollar Loan Center is the official home to the indoor football leagues, Vegas Nighthawks, in beautiful Ooh. Henderson, Nevada. Ha ha. All right. Ka -ka. My uh round Why round don't we have an indoor football league podcast? Uh oh god, I mean, don't give anyone the, ideas. The Raiders though the Raiders are an indoor football team, right? Well they're thinking of joining <laughs> the uh indoor <laughs> football league. Ah best thing Colby said all day. Uh for me, my money line <laughs> money line round robin, give me DePaul, Florida Gulf Coast, and Pitt. That, that I think they can all three win outright, and uh it's a fun round robin. What do you got, Ryan? You want to uh, co-sign that uh, one? We, we didn't even we didn't even have a, a group conversation. I I don't. I mean, I think I think, but Colby and I would agree that Towson and Pitt are just. I mean that. I have that down for Colby a Towson uh, Pitt money line parlay. I don't know if he wants to put a third leg in there. That feels that feels right to me. Um, I I don't know if I want like. Florida Gulf Coast is interesting too, Colby. I, I think maybe all three of those could could let's work do it. could work together. Let's do it. Yeah, let's. So what are you doing? We're gonna take basically uh, Towson Pitt and then add in Florida Gulf Coast. So you're you have DePaul, uh, Colby, and I have Towson. Otherwise, it's the same. My dog is bigger. Dog. Hashtag size Whoa. matters. Long cocks. Hey. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, make sure to follow us on Spotify. Toss us a rating on the old Spotify. Always appreciate that. Uh, check out the merch store. We got a ton, ton of great t-shirts in there. Holiday stuff. Make sure you get it now. Uh, so you have it in time for the holidays. Uh, subscribe to the college basketball experience. Check out uh, daily college basketball picks free on the SGPN app. Just download the SGPN app in the app store. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Sean, it's also the home of the Henderson Silver Knights of the American Hockey League. Kramer, let it ride.